the welcome back. It's still the run up, and this is the last lap of the journey for today. And uh, it's uh, it's just past Christmas. Someone uh, wrote on the social media once that a few days ago that not be Christmas at the fear, not January. <laughs> <laughs> I seen the the hardship that will come is not because of what is going to happen in December. It's what is mm. going to happen in January. So as you're you're spending and you're doing whatever you're doing, you have to remember December has like 60 days. No, January has oh, 145 sorry, days. Oh, January, sorry, has like 60 days inside, mm. inside January alone. And remember, especially now that uh, the UN has said that weakening Naira, rising food prices are affecting Nigerians. We don't even need the UN to tell us. We know. We already know this <laughs> thing. <laughs> we already know this thing. But the annoying thing is that if a government knows that the economic uh, situation needs salaries to be increased, mm -hmm. why not just go ahead and do it? Now the presidential panel reviewing workers' salaries uh, uh, have come out to say, not, not even the presidential panel, the, the minister, the minister of, uh, yeah. of labor has come out to say that uh, salaries of workers will be reviewed upwards. Will be. It could take years. It could take a lot of months, mm. but they are announcing it already. And even before that announcement, I think some people had the wind that salaries may be increased and things are going very, very high. But I do have a question. I mean, is it salary increase that we need at a time like this? Because if you keep increasing salaries, you know, in an economy that doesn't work. I don't think it's salary How many times or how long do you intend mm -hmm. to keep reviewing salaries upward and then inflation, inflation, excuse mm -hmm. me, keeps rising? Uh, there is no stable or viable environment for businesses to thrive. Uh, people... People, civil servants cannot afford daily, basic daily needs. Is mm -hmm. that why am I even put, putting civil servants on the line? Everybody. Nobody can afford daily civil, um, daily life things. Like you cannot. Some people eat 101. Some people eat 100. Yeah. That's, that's ex exactly what on the less UN, than a UN dollar said. a day. Because and that's crazy. You know, the UN also said that, okay, some people, because of that, are going on 001 or 010, whatever, <laughs> whoever can survive like that. But, you know, it, things are really getting tighter and tighter. And then you're coming out to announce, shouldn't it just be a seamless thing that, okay, after a number of years, we increase because some things are increasing. You come mm. and tell us that you are going to form a committee, you will increase. And if you're increasing it, for crying out loud, why will it be at uh, the 11th hour of an administration that is promising us that, what will the next administration do? Can't they decide for themselves mm -hmm. and all that? Like you said, why not just do, make an environment so conducive that the salary you already earn can take you through the month? It, this fire, it's not even fire brigade, a shortcut that the government likes all the time. The knee You know, when we have a problem here, we just solve it. It's like we hear of Idi Amin, whether it was true or false, that when there was no money in Uganda, he went into the mint and just said, print more money. I don't know if that really happened, but this, the approach that a lot of times uh, the government takes here mm. is, is just the same way like that, printing money because there's no money in the economy. It doesn't really make sense to me. It's crazy. I, I mean, how, how did we, like, if you, if you look at the time frame and the height at which the, you know, cost of living mm -hmm. has increased, let's give it, like, five years. The difference is alarming. Oh, dear. It is very alarming. I, I, and, you know, it, it, leaves, it leaves a lot to, you know, wonder because how have we even been surviving all these years? You know, we, we make jokes, especially on social media. P Nigerians say, Nigerians, we can survive in any situation, mm -hmm. whatever the situation is. People were even making jokes this Christmas because yeah. there's been this talk about how they say that beans go cook this Christmas. <laughs> but then the markets were surging with people buying and selling going on. But then if we are suffering and smiling and we're doubling hustle all the time, then it leaves the people in power who are supposed to take responsibility for a lot of things. Like, we don't need to keep doubling hustle. I don't know if you understand. Like, the mindset of the average Nigerian has been tweaked. The mindset of an average Nigerian 
is I have to be suffering to look like I'm doing something, and mm -hmm. that is very it's wrong. so wrong. You are so supposed wrong. to be living a baby girl and baby boy life. <laughs> yes, you deserve it. Yeah, it's it's terrible, and not knowing that everything that is done has a ripple effect is is really alarming. Because if you are in government, you should know everything is connected. For mm -hmm. instance, now as we speak, there are landlords that have heightened their their rents to three times the amount that was paid maybe too Why? early this year. Because they will tell you there's no dollar. Uh, they will tell you there is one thing or the other. The I'm economy sorry, is what has dollar it, got to do with a house that you completed, say, five, ten years ago? Amen to that. But you see, <laughs> that's the reality. You have given them the excuse. Oh, even their bookie that is uh, pushing water, the merua that they call them and all that, they will tell you there's no dollar. Because even if he doesn't change dollar, he has to go to the market to buy something else mm -hmm. that is brought into the market by dollar. Okay, now, that house that a, a, a person earning 100000 could get and stay and be able to pay, if it was, let's say, 150000 now it goes for four fifty or 500000 That means he cannot live in that house anymore. He will go into a house that maybe doesn't have a toilet. And then you're talking about cleaning the environment. And now you have more people living in houses that do not even have toilets. You see how it's connecting. And that, so that, everything, people now become sick. They cannot go to the hospital. That leaves me with a question. Like, is it, is it ever going to be possible to have an entire system overhaul of the country, if you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because now it's easy to sit back and blame government and people in power. But as individuals, we have also contributed in making life difficult for ourselves. So you can imagine that, let us say, somehow magic happens and the dollar naira disparity comes down. Let us say you're able to, like we used to in the past, buy a dollar for 200 naira, mm. assuming. Are people willing to come down? How many things do you understand go my question now? And, come and, down. and then the it's not the government that would do that now. But do you again, understand? but again, you, you see, in some other countries, you cannot just sit down, wake up in the morning, and increase rents as you like, because there's a policy. There, there are some things that are put in place to make sure that never happens. But in these same countries too, the landlords can go to the market and buy things very easily. So now they are connecting everything. If mm. I can't make a living out of the house that I built, then what's the point? So they're, they're hiking everything, they're making everything so difficult. But everybody has to sit up, we know that. But the person who has accepted to be at the helm of affairs and say, life would be better if I sit there, should take the responsibility and do what is right. Let it be left for us. For instance, government now says, I'm going to bring BRT, for instance, so that uh, people will find it more easy or easier to move from place to place. And then you don't provide the BRTs that are enough. And if you provide the, provide the ones that are not enough, you go to BRT right now. The people that stand are inside more. the B, uh, BRT are more than the ones that sit. So if now, like the FCTA, for instance, is giving uh, a red alert warning on communicable diseases, Ebola is back. Even though it's not in Nigeria, but there's a possibility anybody can come. From, a soya can come from anywhere this time because he was the index mm. case. It can come from anywhere. So what if it enters Lagos? And then you're saying, uh, let me run, go to BRT so that we'll have space. That at least uh, it, the chances are lower. But you go to BRT, you can't even find space to, to stand sometimes. Mm. So if the BRT is supposed to carry 30 passengers, now it's carrying like 70. So the people who that are standing are more. That brings me back to my question. It's is terrible. it possible to have an entire system overhaul? Because I am sure that whoever uh, is in charge of the BRT system understands that people are not supposed to stand in those buses. At all. At least not the number that stands. People are not supposed to stand in those buses. So why are people standing in the first place? Not talk of the amount and the number of persons that you find standing every time. It's almost as if if the bus doesn't fill to the brim, it won't move. Mm -hmm. They stand there and, and wait. And in fact, this time, they even have two lines. The lines for the people who are standing and the line for people who want to sit. So if you say you're in a hurry and you want, to, you want to go, you'll stand because the line will be too long for you. You go and stand somewhere else. And then when it comes to the time, you pay the same amount. You mm. stay there. But when this BRT started, they couldn't carry that much people. 
they will tell you there are cameras inside the buses. There's Watch this it. and that, that. Okay, now there are no longer cameras the way I see. There's no longer AC even in the side of the buses. <laughs> they open the windows and things are just going wrong and wrong and wrong. And mm -hmm. guess what? I just saw in the headlines that telcos or telcos, 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 mm -hmm. well, communication uh, companies are threatening that they will stop the USSD uh, services. This uh, where people used to transfer. Yeah. So they will stop it because the banks are owing them up to the tune of 80 billion naira. Eh? So if, <laughs> yes, exactly. So if they stop it, and now we're talking cashless economy and all that <laughs> and all that, how are we going to survive? So that's the question. Are we ever going to be able to have an entire system over? Yeah, so when, <laughs> when these people come out with policies like we were saying earlier on, who do they consult? How much of investigations do they do? Mm. How much research do they do? How much figures do they come by to, make sh to, to understand the gravity of what they are going to do, how it's going to affect the people that are going to be the final consumers and all that? Do they even make these findings? So now, where has 80 billion been hiding? And if they, they say they're stopping the services, you can't blame them. They I mean, are, they're in business. Yeah. They need to make their own money. They still, they, still, they still pay for power. They still pay <laughs> for everything. So how can you blame them? Uh, I, I, it's a long... It's a, it's, this conversation might never end. I, I mean, we're still <laughs> talking about how that there is rising food prices. Mm -hmm. That is going to linger into next year because we've not, we're not done talking about the floods that ravaged the country yeah. this year mm -hmm. and the effect it's going to have on the harvest next year. Mm -hmm. But that is just for another day on the run. And even on the fact that uh, some bandits are demanding tax for people to harvest their own crops. That's still there. <laughs> there so many things. Uh, all these and more, the conversations we're going to keep having on the run-up. But this is where we draw the curtain on today's edition. We hope you had uh, an amazing time as we did. The run-up will return. It will be tomorrow, 11 a.m. to 12, uh, 12.30. But then, until then, uh, do not forget to pick up your PVCs. Mm. The time to do it is now, until you decide. My name is Uchechuku Onoda. I just heard that in Qatar, they are going to change the, the hotel room that Messi stayed in to a mini museum. Mm -hmm. And that is because his role in uh, the, the um, campaign, the Argentine campaign in the Qatar World Cup was so, so good. And he has been honored in his hometown and all that. That means he put in his best and is being recognized. When you leave office or when you leave this earth, what will you be remembered for? Think on that. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Let's do it again tomorrow.